Hi, I'm Elissa Red Miles, and today I'd like to discuss with you our work on encouraging two factor authentication adoption in the wild uh, through the design of two factor authentication prompts. So, in prior work, there has been uh, field work looking at how to design warning messages to discourage risky behavior, such as navigating to unsafe web pages. However, there's not very much field work looking at messaging to encourage secure behaviors, such as enabling two-factor authentication. Uh, so our research goal is to understand if we can identify messaging principles for improving two-factor authentication adoption uh, with the idea that these messaging principles may extend to encouraging other secure behaviors in the wild. Our two research questions um, are designed to first um, investigate whether messaging that's tailored to address particular things from the literature can improve two-factor authentication adoption. Um, and specifically, we're looking at messaging tailored around people's motivations for adopting two-factor, uh, their mental models or understanding, as well as their concerns uh, about two-factor. Our second research question investigates whether applying uh, user experience design patterns from other domains can work for improving the adoption um, of two-factor authentication. So for example, whether personalization or things from marketing literature um, can be effective for encouraging security behaviors. Um, in this work, we conducted a series of controlled field experiments on Facebook, uh, where we modified Facebook's prompt for people to enable two-factor authentication, uh, which is shown here on the left um, and would appear at the top of someone's newsfeed. So we controlled the text uh, that went into these prompts in order to experiment with what was most effective. Uh, our participants did not already have two-factor enabled. Um, they were a representative sample of US Facebook users, and they were selected using standard um, Facebook product experiment protocols for A-B testing. Uh, the metric of interest that we were looking to measure were for changes in the enablement rate, so what we call click to enable rate um, of clicks on this, say, turn on button to enable two-factor authentication. Uh, these clicks correlate with actual two-factor enrollment, um, although we did not have any control over the process of two-factor authentication enrollment. Uh, so our first experiment, which was designed to understand how tailored messaging might impact people's adoption of two-factor authentication, uh, involved a three-by-three -three experimental design where we wanted to test uh, messages that we drew from theory um, and findings in prior work. Uh, so we experimented both with the headline and the body text of the two-factor authentication prompt. Um, so in terms of headlines, we were addressing people's motivation for enabling two-factor authentication, um, and we looked at differences in how we framed responsibility. Um, so protection motivation theory posits that individual responsibility is a necessary motivator for protective behavior. So we had one headline that emphasized individual responsibility, where we said you can increase your protection against account hacking. Uh, on the other hand, some prior work has found that uh, people may be more receptive to adopting uh, security behavior or taking precautions if they feel that their behavior is in partnership with the platform. So we had a company responsibility headline that said your security is our responsibility. Uh, finally, we had a control headline that simply said protect your account pages and friends. Uh, these headlines were then combined in a full factorial design uh, with three body texts. The first addressed people's concerns about two-factor authentication, um, which a number of prior works find are related to the time costs of 2FA or other security behaviors. Uh, so we said that if you turn on two-factor authentication in just a few minutes to help protect you and the people you interact. Uh, we also had a body text that addressed uh, the mental model or mechanism of two-factor authentication, which was also something uh, that prior work, prior work finds um, is important in people's decision-making around two-factor authentication. So we told people, turn on 2FA and we'll ask for a code if we see a login from a device we don't recognize. Uh, finally, we had our control prompt, um, which was turn on two-factor authentication to increase protection for you and the people you interact so it was basically a rephrasing of the control headline. 
Uh, these are examples of the experimental prompts that were shown at the top of participants' news feeds, and you can see all of the possible uh, headline and body text here, although there were ultimately nine messages uh, to try out every possible combination. Okay, um, so we built logistic regression models to predict whether a given user um, would click to enable two-factor on the basis of the attributes of the prompt that they were shown. Uh, and what we find is that compared to the control headline, the user responsibility headline um, caused people to be 33% more likely to click to enable two-factor authentication, uh, whereas the corporate responsibility headline did not result in a significantly different uh, click to enable rate. On the other hand, compared to the control body text, um, we see that those who are shown the mental model uh, or mechanism-based body text that explains sort of what would happen if they enabled two-factor authentication, uh, those folks were 28% more likely uh, to click to enable two-factor authentication. Uh, there was no significant difference between the control group and uh, those who were shown the time costs uh, body text. So over here on the right, we can see the most effective uh, message that participants were shown. Uh, we wanted to understand whether these results would hold when controlling for user demographics uh, as well. So we find that the same messages remain the most effective even when we control for um, gender, age, uh, length of time on Facebook, friend count on Facebook, and amount of time active on Facebook. Uh, but we do see some variance in terms of the impact of these messages across different groups. Um, so younger adults are more receptive to the user responsibility headline than older adults. Um, those who have been on Facebook for longer are more receptive to the mental model messaging, perhaps because they have uh, sort of a better understanding of Facebook um, to leverage in thinking about the mechanism of two-factor authentication. Um, and finally, actually, those who have more Facebook friends are actually less receptive to the mental model phrasing than those with fewer Facebook friends. Um, our hypothesis here is that our control messaging um, emphasized that two-factor could help protect your um, friends. And so that might be more um, appealing to people who have more Facebook friends as opposed to kind of the mechanism for you individually. Um, that said, messaging is not the only thing that influences whether or not people enable two-factor authentication. Um, so even when controlling for what messages people were shown, we see significant demographic effects across all of the demographics that we considered. Um, so men are more likely to adopt two-factor authentication than women. Uh, older adults are also actually more likely to adopt it. Uh, those who have been on Facebook for less time are more likely to adopt, um, perhaps because they haven't had opportunities in the past uh, to be prompted to adopt two-factor. Um, those who had more Facebook friends and those who were more active on Facebook were more likely to enable, um, perhaps because those are indicators of their investment in their Facebook account and therefore their interest in protecting it. Uh, okay, so for our first research question, we do find that tailored messaging can effectively improve uh, two-factor authentication adoption, uh, and in particular, addressing um, people's motivations as well as their mental models um, are especially effective. For our second research question, we wanted to understand uh, the impact of using different UX design patterns. Um, so in particular, we uh, designed an experiment to test three different UX techniques from other domains. Uh, so the first technique was um, personalizing the prompt. So we um, had something like, John, you can increase your protection against account hacking. Uh, and this comes from prior work in marketing and public, po public policy, uh, which found that such personalization increased uh, click-through rates for other kinds of campaigns. Uh, in our second experiment, we uh, tested, tested a message that was a combination of reminder messaging and opinionated design. So in reminder messaging, uh, which has been found effective in security, people can say, uh, click this not now button and be reminded about two-factor authentication two weeks later. Uh, and prior work finds that this helps with eventual uh, adoption of the behavior. On the other hand, opinionated design, which had been found effective in field studies on mornings, is the idea of coloring the desired option, this turn on button, uh, in the blue color to kind of encourage people to adopt. Uh, finally, our third experiment tested the impact of interstitial or blocking prompts. Uh, so this is the one shown here on the left that blocks the user's entire screen. 
These have been found to be effective both in the lab and in the field, but they're not preferred by users because it creates quite a lot of friction for what the user is actually trying to do. Uh, so our second set of experiments addressed um, all three of these UX designs. What we find is that all three designs significantly improve the click-through rate, uh, although opinionated reminders do so less uh, than the other two UX designs. Finally, um, those who enabled two-factor authentication as a result of our prompts kept two-factor authentication enabled in the vast majority of cases. Um, and in fact, those who had been prompted to enable two-factor authentication had 8% um, higher retention versus the unprompted, um, unprompted population who just chose to turn on two-factor authentication. Uh, that's encouraging because it means that prompts are useful not only to encourage behavior, but in getting it to stick. So in summary, what we find is that we offer field evidence kind of validating protection motivation theory, um, showing that framing things as an individual responsibility does indeed encourage adoption. Um, that doesn't mean that security is an individual responsibility, but simply that messaging around it as an individual responsibility uh, does encourage adoption in line with protection motivation theory. Uh, second, people's understanding of the mechanism of two-factor authentication is an effective way uh, to encourage adoption, and this aligns with prior findings in end-to-end -end encryption that we shouldn't hide uh, the mechanism of protection from the users. Uh, additionally, we see that UX design patterns from other fields uh, can effectively increase adoption, although we should be cognizant of using too heavy of a pattern, such as, for example, interstitial designs that might be uh, irritating to users unless we actually need to be doing so. Finally, two-factor authentication adoption is about more than just prompts. Uh, so we saw significant variance within demographic groups, and that's important uh, to remember that prompting alone uh, is not going to solely be responsible for security behavior. Uh, and we should be careful when we're doing this kind of work um, or leveraging these results to keep an eye on security and messaging fatigue. Um, just because we know how to effectively prompt uh, users to engage in a behavior doesn't mean we should always be doing so. And we should be mindful about when we're using these techniques and whether they're necessary. Thank you and happy to take questions.